Eric, what do you got? <laughs> uh, this is my swamp. <laughs> Get out of my swamp. Get out of my swamp. Here, let me, let me do, like, <clears throat> this is my swamp. This is my swamp. This is my swamp. This is the, <laughs> this is the opener. <laughs> <clears throat> Red leather, yellow leather. This <laughs> is my swamp. <laughs> okay. I'm Eric. And I'm Jamie. And this is Horoscope, a podcast for people who love horror movies. And people who want to love them. What you got? Hey, Jamie. I knew it. I knew the question. <laughs> of course I have something. Come on. How long have we been doing this podcast? You think I don't have something? I just came up with this on the spot. I was okay. like, hey, time travel device right here. Did you see it? <laughs> is this is this live action improv that we've never done before? What the fuck? You got a, you got a yes and. Y- yes and. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, you're like. <laughs> All right. Wow, everything is black and white now. It's magical. It's uh, the world of classic <laughs> universal horror monsters. Can you believe it? It took us this long. This long? Well, it makes sense. We were trying yeah. to spook you before, and did I think that, like, I don't know, Dracula was going to spook you? I have watched it. Bored me to death. <gasps> oh. That's, oh, that's the other Dracula. <laughs> Oh, okay. We're, we're, that doesn't even exist yet. What are you talking about? Oh, I see. Okay, <laughs> we're talking okay. about Bella. I'm not, doing a, I'm not doing a voice. Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing. I'm being a bad scene partner. I'm not doing a voice. So we finally have done it. We've gone further back in time than we ever have before. That's right. To discover other genres of horror movies. <laughs> I, was, I thought you were the, the, we're watching Creature from the Black Lagoon, Ooh, right? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was. I thought it was like Welcome to the Black Lagoon. Which Emo trash. <laughs> when I was a gill man, <laughs> I swam I, into the city. That's what I thought the title was. This I was like, it's creature, it's welcome, it's creature. Like this whole time, I was like, I gotta say it right. When I was, I'm excited for this one. I don't know anything about. I have watched no Fishman movies ever in Nothing. my life, but I I like them. All right. Have not seen this movie. Have not seen Shape of Water. Want to see both of them? All tied into this. Yeah. Very closely. It seems like this one, like Universal classic horror monsters, have definitely had like a revival. Yeah, because they have they all have like a look, and it's a good mm-hmm. look, and it's very vintagey, it's very colorful, and it seems that there's like a few kind of icons that have popped up really hard from that, and it seems like Creature is one that's very beloved and very much. Is he the creature? Is that he, his name? They call him Gilman. They, uh, cool. <laughs> I don't know if they call him in the movie Gilman, but like his <laughs> name is known Gil. colloquially as Gilman. <laughs> yes, okay. Gil for short. So. So when I we, we when we started off the year, we were like, okay, there's a few genres we want to do. We want to do yeah. body horror, cover that. We got Annihilation. Right. We're, we're done with that now. We're do- <laughs> wow, we completed it all. <laughs> Checked it off the list. Um, So out of all the universal horror movie monsters, why was like this one kind of that you're leaning towards? I like him. Mask. Okay. <laughs> I like him. I like his look. I like his energy. Like I like the, his little swampy hands. His little cut I of the like skill. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I like him. I... I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I want to see how he's scary because I think he just looks cool. Mm-hmm. I want to see how he's a bad guy. That's going to be something for you to debate when you see this movie. Uh-oh. Is dilemma. He? That's something I've always thought about because like, I remember watching like Frankenstein as a kid and just like, I think that's like, mm-hmm. I, I I assume and like I've read stuff where people were scared but it's so far removed and so old that now it's like when you see Frankenstein even as a child it is not a scary thing. Tell that to me watching Frankenstein Wishbone. That version. <laughs> okay, me okay, up. all yes. right, okay. <laughs> that, no, completely different, Jamie. <laughs> He's a scary dude. He was like stitched up, really. That's how he looks. Well, like in the, they glamorized him. He had a yeah. good look. He was like the Brad Pitt of Frankenstein monsters. <laughs> <laughs> I. He's supposed to be handsome in the book. Frankenstein. Really? Yeah, he just has creepy eyes because they're dead people eyes. Ah, dead people eyes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. I love how he's like, I'm going to desecrate these corpses and, and loot graves, so I'm going to get the hot people. That's <laughs> weird. It's a choice. <laughs> it's like reality TV show. really makes you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Mm-hmm. I know there is a woman swimming. I know there is the man, the fish man. 
that's all. That's There's great. a lagoon that's black. Is it black and white? That's all I know. How would you know if it wasn't black? You, you know, know what? <laughs> Tell, yeah. me, tell me about it. Tell it's like it. a touchstone for a lot of things that we've covered for the first time. So this is going to be a little bit research heavy in the beginning. Just I to, love it. Just to I'm skip ready. some of the stuff out here. So first we'll start with Universal Monsters. What are they? And they say it started in the mid-20s. They said it's like it, like Universal Monsters started with the Phantom of the Opera. Wow, what? He's not sexy in this one. Oh, that's uh, so weird. So that was made, yeah, in the 20s. Lon Chaney was... Wait, oh, wait. I thought it was... My whole world is crashing down around me. It's not just a musical. It was a book? Yeah. No, it was a book. That was a... I didn't know that. Oh, Jamie, off mic, we gotta talk about this. There's so, oh, much, there's so no. much phantom lore I can dump on you right oh, now. Oh, no. So it's a book. Yes. And then the... I didn't know. I didn't know. There was no music. I didn't know. There was... I think there might... I, I might be getting my facts miscorrected, but I think there might have been a musical before Andrew Lloyd Webber's or after. There's another phantom musical. Okay. Independent of Andrew Lloyd Webber's. But Andrew Lloyd Webber made it into a musical, but there's yeah. a book. There's been several movie adaptations of Phantom before Andrew Lebber's. I didn't know that. Yeah. You said Andrew Lebber. Android Labor. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Lebber. <laughs> I didn't, I had no clue. Wow. This is great. Wow. Is there like a, a lost tome for cats? Cats is based off a book. You the know. Bible. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Cats is based off a book. No, it's. Really? Oh my no! god. Yes, it is! It's based off a book by like a famous author. Absolutely not! No, it's not! Yes, it is. No. Oh. I, was, I was like, you're fucking with me. I didn't know what you were gonna say. I was like, okay, Eric, say your bit. What do you gonna what do you got? This is so fat. No, it's a real This is like hairspray. Cats. Oh no. <laughs> musical book. Wow, top search cat musical based on book. The book? What? It's loosely based. It's it's called Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. Mm-hmm. Who's who's the author? What? Who knows? Oops. I guess I'll find out. T- uh, T. S. Eliot. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's a. I, oh, it's poems. Okay, it's a collection of whimsical light poems. Okay, I knew that kind of. Okay. Okay. All right. I thought it was like a. I, all right, I'm gonna shut up. Tell me more. Tell me about. <laughs> Go ahead. I've made I'm lost. Three sentences, <laughs> like three words in. I'm um, lost. It really kicked off in the 1930s uh, when Carl Lamielli Jr. or Carl's Jr. as we'll call him. Okay, great. Who was the son of like uh, I think the current head of the studio? As his 21st birthday present was given Universal Pictures. Whoa! Yes, nepotism was running rapid during those times. No you know, the studio system was in effect. Universal, was like, here's a studio. And he was like, cool, I'm a young, hip kid. Horror is a genre that doesn't really exist. Let's start adapting some of this stuff. Thanks, Carl's Jr. Thanks, Carl's Jr. Wow. So it kind of, it kicked off right away with Dracula, I believe, was like the first one they put in production. And then I think like a year later, or the same year, Frankenstein came out. Okay. And so through the 30s, you have all these classic films that were coming out. Into the 40s, where they made a bunch of sequels. Nice. And then it ended in the 50s. What with... about like Bride of Frankenstein, right? Yes. Okay. It's Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, House of Frankenstein. Wow. So like, fuck Dracula. We're going to, we're really Dracula's dude. daughter. Really? Which apparently is one of the first on-screen depictions of lesbians. I'm on board. Let's watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. I love Bride of Frankenstein. I love a lot of these movies. Um... But one thing I didn't realize is that in the 50s, so this was kind of booming through decades, which is surprising, but by the time they hit like 1950, it had pretty much come to like a whole halt. The only movies they were really making were, do you know Abbott and Costello? Yeah. Tell the tell the crew. Abbott tell the and Costello listeners. were two comedy boys. One was... <laughs> yeah, that's it. One was a boy, one was the other boy. They, <laughs> they did jokes. Uh, but it was like Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. Abbott and Costello meets the Wolfman kind of deal. Whoa! They were meeting the mall. They that's met a, the money. That's very weird. Yeah. That's like Disney Channel original movies. Of, yes. <laughs> it was the Disney Channel original movies of Same the time. Same energy. <laughs> exactly. It. And the only original property that came out within this time, even like for, since the 30s, was Creature. Okay. It came out in 1954. Nice. It came out with, and it spawned two sequels. And then after the two sequels, it pretty much stopped after Where's that. my musical of there, this? Is a creature of the Black Lagoon musical. Wow. Jamie, you are on one tonight. This has been a wild experience. I just... It is awful. I do Uh, have a video of it. It was made in like the early 2000s. 
Uh-oh. And boy ever does it feel like that. And it ran less than a year at Universal Studios. Oh my, oh no, we got to watch that before we watch this. We no. send that. Does it spoil everything? How it's long the is same it? plot. I think it's like a full, sh- like a Oh minutes, shit, okay, yeah. never mind, never mind. Never we can right. fast forward through it now. That'd be a, a treat, a little treat. A little treat, okay. Um, so th- I think there's like multiple reasons of why Universal Monsters kind of dissipated. One, it was kind of changed in hands at a certain point with Universal. It's been going on for decades. They're big stars like Bela Lugosi. People were kind of turning their attention to different things. Okay. Nuclear bombs existed, so all of a sudden all these alien movies started coming out and all these hmm. nuclear mans and stuff like that. What do you think these these guys represent? If we switch to aliens because of the bombs, what are these guys? Um, especially with Creature of the Black Lagoon, it's like the fear of others. Yeah, okay. It is like, because like Dracula is somewhere out there within some weird European area. But this guy's in your damn lagoon! And this guy's in your goddamn lagoon <laughs> in South America, so. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's just like fear of science, fear of what we're capable of. And it's like, oh, what is man capable of? It's like nuclear bombs. So like, okay, cool. Now oh, we'll be afraid that. of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Okay. Here is the wiki. Creature from the Black Lagoon is a 1954 American black and white 3D monster horror film. Ooh. Mm, from another U- one. <laughs> <laughs> from Universal International, produced by William Alland, directed by Jack Arnold, and starring Richard Carlson, Julie Adams, Richard Denning, Antonio Moreno, Nestor Pavia, and Whit Bissell. The creature was played by Ben Chapman on land and by Riku Browning underwater. The film premiered in Detroit on February 12th and was released on a regional basis, opening on various dates. Okay. There's a bunch of information about the 3D filming. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Oh, good, good. Well, then that's it. <laughs> Uh, cool. So, William Arnold, the producer of this movie, all the way back in 1941 was at a dinner party during the filming of Citizen Kane. Okay. The little film called Citizen Kane. Um, and it was the in the... Citizen co- Kane of <laughs> films. <laughs> the Citizen Kane of Citizen... It was a dinner party that would be could described as the Citizen Kane of dinner parties. And he ran across the Mexican cinematographer, Gabriel Figueroa, and he told him about a myth of a race of half-man, half-human creatures that lived in the Amazon River. Half man, half humans? <laughs> so, so, yep. <laughs> half. <laughs> half fish, half human. Okay. Okay. I'll let you decide which half. Um, and so. <laughs> this movie's just like a dude, like a full dude with just like a fish head. A fish head. Like running around. <laughs> On Twitter today, somebody had posted reverse centaurs oh yeah and it's just like a full ass i hate it i've seen it and i hate it i don't even want to talk about it some annihilation shit Mm -mm. Uh, okay so he sound this this idea for about 10 years after that whoa and then eventually wrote a movie called the sea monster which then uh was quickly readapt like rewritten and rewritten again several times until it became the final script okay uh he pulled in references from beauty and the beast to kind of incorporate into this just, Sexy. Just like Sarah J. Moss, you know? <laughs> Equals. Everyone has historically always wanted to fuck the fish guy. First the, one of the titles is like, who doesn't want to fuck a fish guy? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Arnold was brought on board. He had just done a movie called It Came From Outer Space. Oh, shit. We got to watch that. Okay. Yeah. it's. I mean, we got it, right? It's one of the classics. Sure. Yeah. Why not? You're always so surprised when I say we got to watch a movie. You're like, what? I don't know why. I just, I mean, <laughs> on our horror movie, um, movie watching podcast. <laughs> okay <laughs> of course we do <laughs> so this is where it comes into 3d the okay. 3d was it this was the golden era this was kind of weird to me to like think about it because it's in black and white and i feel like traditionally like when we think of old 3d it's the blue and red yeah but this is actually a polarized light method that they used um I have a photo if you want to see that later i do it does look like of course i do uh, a few other successes were house of wax uh which is a vincent price movie and then it came from outer space is uh, House of Wax with fucking Paris Hilton a remake? This is of too that? much. This is too much for you, Jamie. And my brain is going to blow up inside of my cranium. It's a remake of a Vincent Price movie. What? <laughs> with Paris Hilton? <laughs> she was also in the original, which might blow your mind even more. <laughs> I'm shell shocked. You're going to be like, we're going to come back from the movie. You're like, I, I didn't even pay attention. I wasn't even thinking about that. Swamp shock. You were thinking about swamp shock. <laughs> She's got the swamp shock. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> it's just called sepsis. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, I didn't. 
I don't know. This is the this is the episode of me not knowing anything. There is something you do know, Jamie. Anything. And you know what you know is the book that you got for Christmas. Who created the creature from the Black Lagoon? A lady. Perfect. I don't know her name. <laughs> <laughs> I got a book about the makeup designer, like the 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 creature the creature designer of this movie. Who there are some really cute pictures of her sitting in the lap of the creature suit. Have you seen those? I'm sure you have. Yes. Great. Of course. I don't know what her name is, and I haven't read the book because I didn't want to spoil anything. Okay. So I'll read it after this. Don't See, spoil the movie, but I want to hear about her. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do you sure. wanna, okay. yeah, yeah. I don't want to. So, yeah, the creature was designed for most of time was sole credited to Bud Westmore, who was the head of the makeup department at Universal. Sounds like a real asshole. Bud Westmore. Um, he... The, like makeup departments didn't really exist before then and then he mm-hmm. kind of came in with his like i guess they were like a family unit it seemed like a lot of families and when they did a lot of these movie credits they kind of just like they didn't have a bunch of like everyone broken out and so he would usually get the sole credit for all the makeup that departments sucks work. yeah it does suck and guess who didn't care about that bud bud <laughs> liked it that way but then came along millicent patrick uh she actually worked originally at walt disney studios and was one of the first female animators there she was most notorious for creating a lot of the work for Fantasia. Sick. She made Chernabog. She made that design. Nice. So, a lot okay. of cool stuff. Um, after that, she had left, became a model for a bit. Uh, Cash. Casually just became a background <laughs> actress, a model. And then she kind of like met, I think, a producer or someone who liked her. And they're like, oh, because she was always sketching people. And they're like, oh, come on board our makeup team. Nice. And Bud was like, yeah, bring her on. That's great. Mm-hmm. Mm. She was one of the first women ever in special effects in the universal makeup. She was, like, the only woman there. Um, And eventually, she created the creature from the Black Lagoon. She did a little minor work before that. And afterwards, they were kind of really trying to promote this movie, and they're trying to find different ways. And they're like, oh, we should... We have, like, this beautiful model who's created this creature. Title it, The Beauty Who Created the Beast. Put her on the road. Perfect. Show her off to the world. That's where a lot of those photos came from of her, Oh, it was, like, a sideshow? It was, like, not a sideshow, but, like, a... What do you call it? When the like, circuit. The circuit, The press yeah. circuit. Yes. That's crazy. Was uh, there someone in the suit with her? Or was it just the suit? It's her... usually her with, like, the, the props. Like, her taking it around. That's her... dream job. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it Imagine was. being hot enough to just be a model and then an actress and then be talented enough to be a sw- make a swamp man and then take him around. It's been a goal in my life. It's a good life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good life to have. It was. <laughs> It was a good life. Oh, no. Until Bud Westmore came along and was like, oh, this woman is getting all this credit for this swamp man who I usually get sole credit for. Like, if she wasn't around, I would have gotten all credit for this and got pissed. And so then he talked with the studios and suddenly it got changed from the beauty who created the beast to the beauty who lives with the beast. As like her, the beast caretaker, as if she's just like the homestead wife to these beasts. What? To so weird. Remove some of the credit from her. Okay. And she said, "Okay, fine, I'll do that." That's such a weird angle. Even though that happened, because like even though they did that, people still like really enjoyed, I guess, her presence. Yeah, like, no her... shit. Yeah, she sounds much better than Bug. It's such a cool. It's such a cool thing to like that that yeah. legacy of being like you know being able to do animation to model to like it's like there's a story there. Yeah. Bud, what's your story? Uh, and so then it resulted in her coming back, and even though they tried to rebrand it, still didn't work. She still was too successful at Love it. Love that. Too powerful. I told Eric, I was like, I got a book about the the, the Black Lagoon. I haven't read anything about it, because I didn't want to spoil it until now, so. Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about whatever else you have after the movie. Perfect. Okay, you ready to go to the swamp? Let's go to the swamp! Let's go to the swamp! It's my swamp! <laughs> Hey y'all, it is time for content warnings for Creature from the Black Lagoon. This movie is not scary in my opinion in the slightest, but it does have a moment of eye trauma, has characters that die via drowning, and lots of fish and fishman content, as well as underwater shots. If you're afraid of fish or of water, keep that in mind if you're watching along with us. It's our job and it's your job to make the world a little less horrific however we can, so this week we're highlighting the Environmental Defense Fund, who work to help fishing communities all over the world become more sustainable while supporting the livelihood of fishermen. Learn more about them at the link in the show notes. Grab your harpoon! Let's get into it! We just watched Creature from the Black Lagoon! 
What? I'm trying so hard not to do the, the What? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the music slapped. Um let's see if I can keep this straight. Where are my notes? Oh, we're going straight into the recap. Jamie was thorough. We paused the movie at a certain point so we got every fact straight. Oh. Because this movie was complicated. You know, it, it was only not really. It it got pretty it once it hit its stride, it did the same thing like eight times. And true. I loved every minute of it. And I want you to repeat every part of that as it repeats the same thing. <laughs> okay, so um, the movie starts out with, um, you can definitely tell that they were excited about the 3D. Okay, so were people wearing, they were wearing 3D glasses watching this, mm-hmm. but they were black and white. Yes, let me pull it up real quick. Oh, great. Let me show you. So this is, I don't think this is from the actual screening of Creature from Black Lagoon. But, but it, it's like it what is, they used. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. It's I'll just, it. it's just... It's just 3D glasses. Oh, I've seen that picture. I've seen yeah. you've seen this picture too. If you're listening, 100. percent It's just people in suits. Yeah, in the 50s. Just, just being like, wow. Mm, 3D. <laughs> okay, so it starts out with in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and then there's like explosions, and I'm and like, the kill man. <laughs> there's it's like they're getting their money's worth out of the 3D, um, and then there's like a voiceover talking about how life began in the ocean, um, and it's like a cool. I don't know. It was dope. The intro was great. Um, what a time to be alive when, like, <laughs> evolution was, like, a cool, hip concept. Yeah. Well, we were saying that they were more pro-science than a lot of people are these days. <laughs> so, thanks, scientists. Um, we are in South America, and um, there is an archaeologist named Carl. Yes. Who looks like Doug Digadome. Or Colonel Sanders, pick your poison. <laughs> he um, finds a fish hand sticking out of rock, um, <laughs> and then does. he just snaps it off of the rock. And he's like, "I gotta take this back to the lab." And so then he um, and he has two local guys. Where, do you know where are we in South America? We don't know. Amazon River. Yeah. Okay, Brazil. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So there's two local guys who are helping him at the campsite, and they stay there. He goes back to. Um, Science HQ, basically. And so our cast of characters, we have Kay, who is a lab assistant. Um, she is dating David, who is a ethiologist. He's a fish scientist. They work together. And then we have um, Mark, who is their boss, who is also a scientist, like a biologist. Um, and then there is another guy. Don't worry about him. That There's they just, just call him. Dude. They call him Doctor. Yeah, as if the another... boat is uh, just filled with doctors. <laughs> is everyone a doctor? Um, doctor. Okay. Doctor. So those are our people. Um, we meet Kay. She's talking to the archaeologist, and she's talking about. He's wondering why David hasn't proposed to her yet. She's like, "Oh, well, he figures that it's cheaper if we just live together and don't get married." Great. AKA um, he's seen Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so he pops out of the water, and um, they all look at the fish hand. And they determine that it, they don't know what it could be, but it looks kind of human. And then they're looking at the hands and it's swimming, but there's also fingers. So they're like, what is the deal with this thing? And when, so, you, when they look at the fingers, Colonel Sanders goes, well, that's finger looking good. <laughs> you know, he takes a bite. <laughs> um, so they're what if like. It was, instead of fish, it was chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they're like, all right, we are going to go to the area that he was and we're going to try to see if we can find, they determined that the rest of the fossil might be in the water because of the way the hand looks. So they go on an expedition on a boat called the Rita and they have a captain named Lucas, mm-hmm. who is your typical pinstriped uh, captain man who's just jovial. It's like an archetype that you know, yeah. but like what the archetype is. I don't is know not, how to explain yeah. it to you, but you figure it out. Um, and before they get back to camp, the um, the guys who stayed back at camp get murdered by the fish man, and you don't see you don't see his face yet. You hear him. the The scream was really good. The like fish noise, the growling, the fish noise. Mm-hmm. Um, he has big ass hands, and he just puts his big hands on both of their heads. It's like a head size hand and it kills them both a lot of hand work in this movie a lot of hands yeah um so when they get back to camp they're like oh where are my dudes where are my boys is what he says and the boys are murdered and they're like oh it's probably a jaguar and then um you we will continuously get shots of the fish hand that is like it got pretty comedic just the hand slowly creeping up out of water with like a very dramatic score um and it tries to grab 
Kay's foot, but before it can, she gets called called over, and so it doesn't. Um, and there's tension between David, the boyfriend fish do- fish scientist, and his boss Mark, who is the uptight blonde guy. Um, there was like weird tension over Kay. Like Mark Mark is weird about their relationship, and he's like not happy about it. Um, and he is kind of just giving him a hard time. So they look for the fossil. There's like a montage of them trying to figure it out. They can't find anything. They're like, ah, beans. So then they dive into the what? Is that when they go? No, then they go to the lagoon. When do they? They're not at the lagoon yet. They're just on the Amazon. I think they go to the lagoon pretty, like. Like after this, they, they find, they get like a plant sample. For some reason, the they're like, okay. There's like a dope lagoon, but nobody ever comes back from it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's because um, it's because one of the workers gets pulled overboard. One of the crewmen, right? I think no. The reason why they go to the lagoon is because they're talking about because the where they found the hand was broken off. Yes. And so they're like, oh, this is broken off, so it's probably over in this area. That's right. Okay. And, and then, then they're Lucas like, is like, the, the, people go there and they get murdered. Yeah. Well, he, what he says is, there's a beautiful lagoon, but no one ever comes back to talk about it. Ooh. He doesn't say people go to get murdered. <laughs> 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 go to murder reef um so then they go to the black lagoon they're like oh beautiful and you can see very clearly at some points they are behind a screen they like there's a screen running behind them and they're like on a moving in the lot eric you said this was in the universal lot right yeah it's filmed uh split between universal back lot and a part of florida honestly it looked great mm-hmm. it looked very florida heavy episodes lately yeah how do we always stumble upon these what, things there were some gators instances. in this movie i don't know um okay my notes really break off really quick here. Well, I love um, it. <laughs> what Jamie just so, showed me is a very dense paragraph, and then it slowly trickles into, like, single sentences, and then... Fishman breaks the boat. Oh. That's what I have written down. Um, and he rips... They, they cast a net out to try to catch something, so he breaks part of their boat and rips the net. Um, Kay goes swimming, and she... It's, like, the iconic white bathing suit, and she's, like, swimming, and there's a really cool shot of the fish man swimming underneath her... So we get the idea that he wants to kidnap her and make her his fishy bride is his objective. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the suit looks really good. Um, it looks kind of goofy out of water is what I determined. But the in-water suit looked great. Um, and they don't see him at that point, but they find him later because he climbs up onto the boat. They're, whatever. So one of the, one of the crewmen gets um, pulled over, gets killed, and they're like, oh, it's by a demon. They're like, no, it's probably by this fish dude. And so then they're all talking and Mark, the blonde other, blonde boss man, he wants proof. So he wants to, um, he wants to kill it and take it back. And he's obsessed with people knowing that they actually saw something. And then David, um, wants to take it alive or just get like a sample from it. Um, Kay's kind of just chilling. Um, her and David are pretty cute. I liked Kay. She's kind of like a little bit of a nothing character. She was fine. She was there for the shot. Like, the yeah. shot of her... Like, the two shots. There's the two. There's the one of her swimming with the creature, and then... The one that we will see soon. Yes. So, um, <laughs> the creature ends up... He keeps... He, like, climbs up and tries to bust in, but he's afraid of light. Um, Lanterns. Yeah. Which I think is established early on, because that's what that's what he gets attacked by at the very beginning. Oh, yeah. One of the guys... Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So. He's learning. Um, so they throw... Yeah. There's... Whatever. Basically, the whole movie is the creature's hand slowly popping in. Kay sees it and screams. Everyone turns around and goes, gasp. And then they try to shoot him with a gun or a harpoon. This guy gets stabbed twice. It's not a problem somehow. Um, and there's, like, a there's an established, like, inner cave working system lagoon thing also deeper in there. So we see that a few times. The guys are going off to try find him. Um, he ends up... They end up capturing him at one point because they poison the entire lagoon and they kill all the fish and then he gets, he gets like knocked out. And so they take him and they put him in like a little container up on the boat and then he busts out of the container and attacks, um, the other doc, the guy they all called doctor. I thought he was going to like rip his eyeballs out or something. That's what it looked like. It looked like he was doing the, the... Yes, it did. Yes. Um, and then he... That guy just gets his whole face bandaged and looks like a mummy, basically. And they're like, oh, he's probably going to die. So, kill count is four dudes, one dude almost dead. Yeah. It it sounds like I'm jumping around a lot, but this is really... It's pretty straightforward. It's just, this is the formula, and it's delicious. It's like... It's like going through 
a, like a haunted house maze. Yeah. Where you're just kind of walking with your friends and you know, all of a sudden like the thing pops out and then it yeah. just disappears or the hand comes out to swipe at you mm-hmm. and then it disappears. This movie is worth, if you're listening to this, watch this. This movie's worth watching. It's it's mostly beautiful. It's classic. Yeah, it's classic. It's classic. It is, it looks great. The underwater shots were amazing. They're like, there are some really cool shots of the like chase scenes basically between the creature chasing them and then chasing the creature. Um, so what ends up happening is that they're they're trying to leave and Mark is like I think we should still try get him and then they're like no we're fucking leaving everyone is dying we are leaving and then he um, grabs the captain's shirt and like shakes him and he's like you're gonna listen to me and then the captain pulls out a knife and he's like smiling and he's like I am not I am not gonna I, listen to you I'm the captain now but I've always been the captain <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like fuck y'all so they're trying to leave and then there's like this big ass log tree just like a bunch of stuff blocking their way out of the lagoon so they can't leave and then they break part of the boat trying to move it so mark is trying to convince david that this is their last shot to get proof and david's like who fucking cares like we're all gonna die and so there's been an argument the whole time that david is saying that mark sounds like a big game hunter and that he's not being a respectful scientist and that he's Facts. yeah and then the other guy is like I want proof, I want fame, I want to kill it, blah, blah, blah. So um, he says he's going to go out and try secure around the log, right? He's going to try to just give them an anchor point, basically, so they can pull through. And then the other guy's like, well, I'm going to come with you. And he's like, no, you're not. And then um, Mark punches David pretty hard in the dramatic 50s. He falls over and then he, like, whoops his ass and, like, punches him. And then David goes out. So David is trying to secure it. The creature is there. And then Mark shoots it. You see, like, a harpoon shoot by David, and it's Mark, but he's trying to help him. We thought he was trying to shoot him for yeah. a second. I think that was that was one of the good... That was the 3D shot, it was, right? Oh, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, harpoon oh, yeah. coming at us. Yeah, I, I was trying to catch those. I was trying to, like, see when I knew they were happening. That's probably why that hand is so played in the movie, because it's just the hands oh, reaching out yes. to the audience. Yeah, duh. <laughs> and this, we're like, okay, his hand's here again. <laughs> um, his hand reaches through at there. It's so funny, they're like... There's, like, one point where they're like, oh, my God, where the fuck is he? And then he pops up, like, right behind him. He's, like, right there. <laughs> like, on the boat. Like, through the window. <laughs> so funny. They're like, oh, my God, how are we going to find him? And then you just see his little, like, feet slapping by. <laughs> um, he's not even a light stepper. <laughs> no. Um, so, Mark, he grabs Mark and he's like, I'm going to drown you, motherfucker. So, he grabs his foot and he's pulling him down into the depths. They fight. So extended nice. fight scene. Really long. David's trying to go after them. And then um, Mark gets strangled. Mark is dead. Yeah. Mark dies. And he pops up out of the water and they see him and then Kay's like, ah, beans. So there, it's Kay, the captain, the doctor who's hurt, one crewman, and David left. Um, And so then they're like, okay, we're going to take the fish poison we used earlier and basically kill him like a mosquito. They're like, we're, we're fucked. And... Kay says, what, we need two martyrs now? And I'm like, what about all the other guys who died? I don't know. So the it guy's like... It's the entire time, because, like, the one, the <laughs> doctor gets hurt, and they're like, that, if he died, that'd be a waste of good experience and knowledge. Literally. Like, and the three other guys. Yeah, they're just like, now those guys, whatever. I mean, a little bit of, a little bit of racism. <laughs> um, so, thanks for the harmony on that. Yeah. So, the guy's like, I'm just gonna shoot more fish poison at his face in small doses and try and knock him out, basically, is what happens. Um, but before he can do that, the guy leaps out of the water, grabs, or he climbs onto the boat, grabs Kay, and then yeets himself into the water. So he has Kay. She passes out. He takes her to the underwater grotto. Um, he leaves her on a stone. David chases after. That's a great name for a bar, by the way. Underwater grotto? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It has to be themed, though. Oh, oh, creatures. creatures. Yes. And mini golf. Um. So, <laughs> Kay, <laughs> Kay's on the stone. She wakes up. She's like, oh, David, they embrace. Then the creature's pissed. Um, the creature throws his harpoon gun. They're fighting. He, like, picks up David. He's going to, like, kill him. But then the other two guys followed and shoot the creature a few times. And then the creature starts stumbling out. And David's like, no, don't kill him. And then they all just kind of follow him and watch him collapse into the water. Yeah, don't put him out of his misery. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, let's just let him And then he sinks into the briny depths. The end! Dun, 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 dun. That was the movie. I want, I want to circle back real quick to the cave scene because there's three parts. One okay. is that's the other iconic scene of the creature, you know, holding her in yes, his arms, yeah. walking along. Uh, what is up with everyone being like, you know what monsters want? Sexy ladies. Like King ladies. Kong too, right? Oh yeah. Big big fan of a small blonde woman. Why? 
don't know. Okay, yeah, I anyway. feel like there's something deeper there that we just can't no. <laughs> handle this podcast. <laughs> you almost got it. Yeah, yes. Uh, and then also when you said he like kind of picked up the guy, like he fucking like two arm picks up David over his head and was like about to slam him on the ground, yeah. which was like impressive. It was cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and there was a bat in the cave, randomly. <laughs> yeah, there's like a bat puppet for no reason, which is pretty funny. They just had it on set. They were just like, <laughs> use it. Yeah. But yeah, no, great job. Wow. That's the movie! But I mean, that was our fastest recap, I think, ever, but it's a pretty straightforward movie. Yeah. Nothing really complicated going on there. You should just watch more of these movies. They're all so simplistic. Yeah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What else do you have to, anything you have to tell me about? Yeah, so we'll dive back into it. Love a fish pun. <laughs> I guess the budget on Wikipedia is unknown, so it cost a wow. certain amount of money. A ton of money, it must have been. Uh, the underwater features, yeah. Yeah. Because we were talking about it the entire time, I'm like, how, like, I'm even baffled at this time period of how they're able to, like, have a full cast and crew, but yeah. mostly shoot underwater. It looked amazing. And the rig they must have had yeah. for the water. I and feel it, like CGI is easier to understand, even though it's much more complicated. Mm-hmm. Like... Like, technically complicated? I, well, even not technically. Like, it's more math and science and special effects and whatever and computers and stuff. But I, if I watch a movie now, I'm like, oh, that's CGI. That makes sense. But this is like, how the fuck? How did you do that? The movie magic. Movie that, magic. Which I always love. Hey, love-ed. big picture movie magic. Ah, oh, yeah, we got the pictures. It's underwater. See, it took me only this long, but now I'm on board with the bit. <laughs> you can't stop now, Jamie. <laughs> it got positive reception. Uh, I had, there's like one uh, small blurb of a review that said it had juicy atmosphere and luminous underwater photography. I would agree. Which I like it. Yeah. I like the juicy atmosphere. Mm. Ooh, that sounds like us reviewing something. Mm, juicy. <laughs> That's the one word that Guillermo d- took away. But yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the fish in the, the water here. Um, yeah. The shape of it, if, if we will. So pretty much shape of water. Joke. I said that joke earlier and Eric just <laughs> yoinked it for the podcast. You thought you thought I was just going to let you yoink it? <gasps> Absolutely not. I will not stand for it. This is staying in the podcast. So the reason why we keep on bringing up shape of water, as many of you know, is yeah. pretty much directly inspired by Creature of the Black Lagoon. I mean, exactly directly inspired. And it's pretty much his rewrite because he saw this movie and he saw that one shot of like him kind of like brushing her ankle. Yeah. And he's like, why aren't they not together? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I do not get this. <laughs> and then that's all like Shape he's of the like, Water. But when do they kiss though? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, it's just like, I, I, yeah. Why not? I can't wait to watch that movie. It's gonna I'm be, excited. It's gonna be yeah. fun. It's gonna be, be fun. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, so Positive Reception, it got two sequels, Revenge of the Creature and The Creature Walks Among Us are the names. We really have, like, lost the air of titles. Yeah. Like, I feel like back then, movies were just like, it is the title that they are trying, it's like, you know, it came from outer space. Yeah, I like that. The Creature Walks Among Us, it's just like, you just, th- now we have, what, The Witch? Insidious 2. Insidious, Insidious Chapter, Chapter 2. two. Tell what? me your thoughts. What'd you like? I, what didn't we like? What didn't we like? Okay, well, I'll... I thought that the suit out of water, it's very, I feel like it's very clear that there are two suits. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, but it felt, once you pointed it out, it felt very clear. Because the, he has to like breathe, so he does the little fish like gaping mouth, and it's like very silly. It does not, it's like I see your attention. Yeah. But. It's like, I get it, but his face looks kind of goobery. Um, it's, it's hard to, I mean, it's hard to criticize the movie. Would love to have less racism in it, I think. Yeah. Um, K being a little bit more well developed, um, I really liked her though. I wasn't, I wasn't like annoyed. I don't think she, I think she did a great job. I appreciate. I liked her and David a lot. A, 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 like a profession. Yeah, she had a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah she wasn't just some random. Dude, like I'm bringing my girlfriend on the Amazon. Well, there is like the, the random weird line where he's like, "I don't know if we should go there with a woman." I'm like, "She's a scientist." Yeah. Also, your like your coworker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was weird. And then they're like talking about how she discredits her own career. Um, because she feels like she owes him because she has, I don't know, because they're dating. And then the other doctor's like, wrong. You, you're just as accomplished as he is. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. And then that guy gets his face, his, like, <laughs> face clawed off. Um, it's hard to it's hard to criticize a movie like this. Mm. It's hard to say something that I didn't like about it. Um, the pacing was great. Underwater. Maybe, I don't know if the creature was a little scarier. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever feel like... But, I mean, it's the 50s. You know, like, what are we, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? How are you going to make yeah. a creature scary? I said, yeah, I like challenge it. for the audience. Show us something that from, like, 1950s or before that is, like, legitimately scary to this day. Yeah, it's hard to, I think the, the underwater shots were obviously the best part of the movie. 
Yeah. Um, incredible. Like, really, really cool shots. Um, I felt like this whole thing was like a Tumblr gift set. Very mm-hmm. aesthetic. <laughs> With that <laughs> shot of, like, to the creature finally grabbing Kay and, like, her turning and screaming. It's yeah. just like, I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, iconic. Right there. Mm-hmm. Boom, you did Yeah, it. I feel like I, I've seen... I don't know what I thought this was. It was different than what I thought it was going to be, though, because I felt like... I don't know what I thought it was going to be. Um, wish Kay hadn't have gone swimming. That shot was great. But why the fuck would you go swimming in the Amazon by yourself after you guys are chasing down a dangerous creature and you just saw gators? Saw I don't gators. understand. Even Lucas was just like, you're too far. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah, you back. <laughs> Is there anything you don't like about it? Um, the one thing that I picked up on this watch was something that you kind of briefly talked about where you're like oh this is gonna come up and it really doesn't is when they're going down further and when you like go down and like dive further you have to like take time to adjust Re- the pressure yeah. and there's like just like they bring it up at the very beginning it's like okay this is gonna obviously play out and then it happens again where they both of them mm-hmm. pop up fast because they just like saw the creature and try to kill it but and then she's like it came back too fast and they're like yeah but we saw a creature and it's like, okay, this is the second call, so there's going to be a third time. Well, that's what I thought when he popped back up, because I thought they were going to be like, okay, he's just waiting to come back up mm-hmm. before he dies, but then they figured out he was dead. That would have been perfect. Yeah. Something. It like, was weird. Yeah, it was weird. Or like or like that that negotiation, I guess, like the person would have where they're like, they know they have to wait a certain amount of time, Ooh. but they see the creature there, so it's like, what do I do? Do I like sacrifice myself and potentially hurt myself by going up too fast, or do I like... What is that called? The bends? Yes. Yeah. And they didn't get a bend. They just kind of popped up. They're like, oh, that was crazy. They're like, ah, fuck. Yeah. The fish man. <laughs> and so that, that, like, stuff like that I was thinking about. And I was also thinking yeah. about how, like, out of all the classic Universal monsters, a lot of them, like, don't translate to, like, modern movie structures. Because, like, it's like, go to a place and then here's this thing. Yeah. Usually these movies are more, like, there's more of, like, another plot element to it that a creature exists in. And this is very much, like, a survival escape movie. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that, that kind of plot is, like, still relevant. It's still, like, modern. And so you just could update this so easily. And somehow this is like the one property that hasn't been touched. Other I don't know why. It's not for the lack of trying. I, yeah. The, in research, there has been like pretty much like every decade, there is a moment or several moments when they try to revitalize this thing. And for whatever reason. That's so weird. They never, I think like John Carpenter was attached at what? one point. That would have been amazing. That would have been cool. Guillermo was attached to make just a remake. Yeah. How did, so how did Shape of Water, how does it work? What do you mean? Is it, is it a universal movie? No, because it's not the creature. It's just another fishman. Okay, but like... Well, it's confusing too because yeah. he did Hellboy and that has a fishman in it. Really? He yeah. just, he's like, I gotta get back to this boy. <laughs> I gotta get back to my fish boy. My, my gilly man. <laughs> um, and that's why that movie's... It's wild. And then there's like okay. the dark... Remember, do you... How, how involved were you when they were trying to do the dark universe movies? Um, knew, not involved. I mean, knew about it vaguely. Right. That, yeah. That's apparently was part of that, but of course everything was probably rumored to be a part of that because they only what got was, one movie What in. was that? It was The Mummy with Tom Cruise was supposed to be the launch of Oh, it. Jesus. That fucking... I watched that movie on an airplane, but I, I wasn't... It? No, I wasn't watching it. <laughs> my, my favorite thing to do on planes is watch everyone else's movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I just watched like 10 movies at Catch once. Jamie on the plane watching your movie. Literally. It was when we were flying back from South Africa and it's 24 hours in the air. Oh my gosh. Miserable. So I was, um, there was like one, the last 14 hour stretch, I was just like watching everyone else's movies. So I've seen like half of that movie. Oh, great. Yeah. That's, that's actually the way they said you should watch that movie. Yeah, it's yeah. on a 24 hour flight on somebody else's computer. <laughs> so that movie, what else? Frankenstein again. And... Ha- Javier Bardem was going to be Frankenstein. That would have been amazing. Gal Gadot was going to be Bride of Frankenstein. Less amazing. Johnny Depp was going to be the Invisible Man. Damn. But then they made an Invisible Man movie. And then that fell apart. And immediately after that, Lee Winnell was like, all right, I'll make my Invisible Man movie. Very weird. Properties are so fucking weird. I don't get them. Like, it just, like, it's so weird that our minds are able to... And I'm, like, curious of people who aren't, like, as attached to it to understand what's going on. Yeah. Because, like, the fact that we have, like, what, three Spider-Man in, like, a decade? Yeah. How's that not confusing to everyone? It's confusing to me. I'm confused. Well, that's because you haven't seen the original trilogy, Jamie. I think we kind of hit the end of the road. Anything else? No, I'm excited to watch. I feel like Shape of Waters, maybe not soon, but soon-ish. That's a curious case because it is has horror elements to it, but it's really not a, a horror movie. Great. We'll save it for when I'm overwhelmed. Perfect. Because we can't watch Twilight again. Let's hit up a really hard one next. Oh, <laughs> we'll God. Next. Let's watch Possessor. Um, Scary-wise, I give this a one. Oh my! Oh, da, 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 it's da, not da, scary. Da. It's not scary. You say that and you go home. 
It's it's true. <laughs> the movie tries to scare you, but secretly you fall you, you fall in love. The, I'm the, not the, afraid the, the, of. We were talking about it, like ranking genre, like subgenre wise. It's like, I think it's so far, slashers, body horror, zombies, supernatural horror film, creature feature. Creature feature is dead last. Damn, we gotta find a good one. Getting They're spooked. just not, I don't know, I'm just, I always feel, I I never want to watch Jaws on this podcast, because I just don't want to watch it. We might maybe someday, but for now it is not in the works, but I just, I'm never, like, I don't know. I don't think fighting off an animal or, like, a being that's not, like, I don't know, like, alien or, like, monstrous, I mean, it's not really, like you know what I mean, I don't know. Just you like, weren't scared of the alien from aliens, right? No. I mean, I, I didn't like him. <laughs> I didn't love him, but I wasn't like that... I, didn't, I wouldn't want to be around it. It's probably because, I mean, like, it seems like what you're what you're describing, too, is, like, the slow, like, unrealism of what you're facing. Because Slashers mm-hmm. is, like, a dude. You go from, like, a dude to, like, a foreign creature that does not exist. Well, I mean, I feel like body horror. But then you're taking, like... I guess that's, like, an element of you being involved in, like... And then for ghosts and stuff and demons, it's, like, I don't know, get a Bible. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which is usually... <laughs> That's a solution. <laughs> that's a solution. <laughs> no, that's true. But I get it. Like, I, I think I'm, I'm very similar in that sense, too, where it's like, it's just like, why would I be scared of this thing? And there's only very yeah. few things. I feel like I'm trying to think now, but there's like very few movies that I can think about that have monsters. Like, I would say like the, of what we've watched, Krampus has actually a pretty good scary moment when he's like running across the rooftops. That was sick, though. I wasn't scared. I was like, yeah, I got him. But like the weight of it. I think it's like when you know, like there's this massive beast kind of like charging toward you. That's... I didn't feel like it was charging towards me, though. Okay. It's, I, th- these are not movies where I'm like, oh, fuck, what if I had to fade it? <laughs> Face fight a Krampus. A, fight fish man. It's like, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm just watching it. So this is, these movies are the least involved, I feel. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if that changes. I can only think of like, like creature features, like crawl. I don't even know. Like in um, in Annihilation too, I wasn't like the gator, the gator shark, the gark. I was just like, mm-hmm. this is the gark, you know. Yeah. That's not what freaked me out about that movie. He's just so. living his life. Yeah. So I think we'll watch. We'll sprinkle these in. Sprinkle in a hint of old monsters. I mm. give this. I give this four out of five aqua lungs. Ooh. I give it five out of five short shorts. Uh, okay. Yeah. What well, we got? Okay, we got. You can't. You can't bring up the short shorts right at the end of the episode and expect us not to talk about the shot. Okay, listen. Like this is why you need to watch the movie. It's also. I mean, like, cool. Gilman underwater stuff. Great. But the outfits are. Great. Eric just like short shorts. I do love a good pair of short shorts, and these specific short shorts. We're talking about guys, not on girls, because this no. would make you sound very creepy. Oh, okay. You're That's like, great. I love short shorts on women. On sure, women. who doesn't? But the guys. Yeah, but the men. <laughs> and again, not saying that like in a sexual man. It's just I want that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, she had like a million pairs of pressed high waisted linen pants, and then her, her boyfriend's even, just wearing the same nowhere, pair of shorts. Nowhere on the same level of this one man's pair like of shorts. Like the second half of the movie, he's just wearing his little shorty shorts. Because they're like it. a good length, and they're like a good height. Mm-hmm. And then he's got like the good, like Converse esque black shoes on, like swimmer <laughs> shoes. And there's a moment where he's just like there with like shirtless with a gun. I'm like, do I need to get a gun? <laughs> <for this?" laughs> I need a heart <laughs> Yeah. And that's the end of our episode. Follow us on Instagram at Horoscope Pod with 1D and at Twitter at Horoscope Pod with 2Ds. We post episode announcements, behind the scenes, and other things that we reference on the episodes, so follow us there if you want to keep up to date. Your horoscope for the day is dive into life this week. Try not to worry about what lurks below the surface. <laughs>